Jorge, a, a few minutes ago we were talking about how do you hire the ideal IT person for a biodiversity informatics institution. And the comment was sometimes the salaries that our institutions can pay are nothing like the salaries that, that these people can make elsewhere and that that has to figure into the decisions. Can you reflect on that? It's absolutely true. It's, uh, we experience that kind of, uh, of uh, well, we experience that. And uh, essentially, it was part, partly corrected because we were offering some jobs that were interesting, and some people were willing to earn less. I mean, people in the computer in the computer world, if they are good, they normally can get much more money than any NGO can pay or government agencies can pay. But perhaps they find the work interest. And the other thing was for the, in the long term, you really have to figure a way of paying better. So it's a combination. The work can be very interesting and very fascinating and very um, well fulfilling for some kinds of people. Uh, and, and, and that and some people can some people can compensate uh, or, or accept less money because the, the, the work is, is more interesting or better. But in the long term, I think you need to, to be able to pay better certain certain positions. We have a comment That's what you mean? Yes, yes, thank you. We have a comment from your boss. Uh, I, uh, Jorge, this is Chris. I prefer to use the word colleague. It is, it is, it is um, a town who is being very hierarchical um, and, and not, uh, therefore, very collaborative. Um, I, I'm going to second what you said, and I'm going to extend that thought not just from uh, IT experts, but also uh, researchers in biodiversity informatics, of which we have oh, approximately 10 in uh, the Biodiversity uh, Institute. All of them can, all of them have had job offers from uh, companies outside the Biodiversity Institute and University of Kansas, from the, um, uh, the tel telecommunications industry, especially Sprint, AT&T, some of the other uh, companies. Um, but they have chosen to stay at the Biodiversity Institute and make less money because of exactly what Jorge has said. They are working uh, in a job and, and for a purpose that they have a passion for. They see their work having um, a uh, terrific end result, and that is helping the sustainability of the planet in a small way, in a medium way, in a large way. They are contributing to it, as opposed to helping to make profits for Sprint or some other IT company out there. Mm -hmm. Thoughts around the table, anybody? Everybody tired? <laughs> It's been a long week and we still have a quarter of it to go. Comment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No comment, but my, some concern. Okay. Speak in the loudest voice you have. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is Jean-Claude. Uh, I can also... Oh, sure. Yeah. It's uh, nice to, to hear you again. Um, let's say that uh, uh, this training is... Uh, okay. It's better. Thanks. Nice to, to hear you again. Um, let's say this training is a very good opportunity uh, for me and uh, no doubt for all the participants because um, clearly, uh, let's say we are fed with concrete, um, let's say successful cases. The case of Sambi and the Minister of Environment, uh, let's say, and the case of uh, the Biodiversity Institute of the University of Kansas, 
which is the case, uh, let's say, I was dreaming about, had many, let's say, uh, useful inputs from um, the colleague from uh, Bra uh, Brazil, and also, uh, let's say, the useful contribution of uh, um, uh, of uh, a town. Uh, me uh, at this stage, I don't have, uh, let's say, uh, question, but uh, I am very worried about how, let's say, to to succeed in uh, creating and to contributing to the uh, establishment of how to contribute uh, in my home country, how to contribute to the establishment of such institution, and have, uh, let's say, uh, good uh, collaborators uh, to fully ex uh, to fully succeed. Because from the uh, example also of Konabio um, uh, you talked about, uh, from all this I, I think that, and I'm aware of the fact that the development of a country uh, must, uh, let's say, uh, is a, all those things are very important, if not indispensable, for the development of a, a country. And we need, uh, let's say, to take knowledge, create knowledge as scientists, take knowledge to useful information, and uh, the environment is important, and such institutions are very important to succeed. So I'm very worried about how to, to succeed, how to collaborate, and, and so on. So just a comment, but I don't have a specific question. I would like to thank the organizers, uh, thank Mr. Uh, thank, uh, uh, Mr. Town, uh, Peterson, uh, Chris, and uh, all other organizers and uh, all the, let's say, the trainers who talk about their specific cases and so on. Thanks so much. I think there's a there's an interesting point in there, which is, and it's been mentioned a couple of times earlier, that certainly there is competition in this field. And I talked about that in my biodiversity informatics initiative game talk. There is competition, mm -hmm. there are competing initiatives. But when we go from the global level down to the national level, I don't think there's much competition where you know the the Ghanaians want to beat the Beninese, or the people in the U.S. want to beat the Canadians or the Mexicans. Rather, I think the the history of this field has been one of quite good collaboration and cooperation. And so I mention that because if some of the people around the table um, at some point are, are creating in institutions, as we're discussing this week, I think it's quite feasible that when you see capacities or when you see activities at another institution, maybe in Mexico or in Brazil or wherever, I think almost universally you'll see a lot of openness to finding a way to transfer that technology or transfer that experience. And that might be you know, in the form of reciprocal visits, or perhaps better still, it might be in the form of exchanging personnel. So if you, know, if you have somebody and you want that person to get up to speed in X, you know, in, in Digger, or in Darwin Core, or in georeferencing, or in niche modeling, or in whatever, one very, very effective way to do that is to take one of your staff members, one of your IT people, one of your biologists, one of your what have you, and say, would you like to do a four-month stay with such group? Again, it could be any one of these countries. But my point is, I don't see any competition between countries. And I think even, even when there is competition, we're fairly collegial about it. But, uh, yeah, but I think 
you know, I, can you imagine, Jorge, a situation under which, you know, Conabio would say no to an African um, staff member or, or uh, team member wishing to come to Conabio for some, some uh, in-person, uh, in-practice training? I, I think you are making a good point, and it's interesting. I don't think there is competition between the national institutions, among other things, because there is no um, common pot of money that you are competing for. Maybe the GF, but GF is not even giving money anymore to, to national institutions, like, for instance, it did to, in, in, in the Africa, in the southern part of Africa, during the Sabonet uh, project. Uh, and then the G, G, GF also gave money to Conavio and to Humboldt. But in kind of independent, we were not competing for the same money. So, no, I think there is a lot of reality. And we experienced that since the very beginning when we spent almost two weeks in Australia. Uh, people from, from India, from Conavio, from the Indonesian uh, Biodiversity Agency at that time, and also from Kenya, remember well. We spent two weeks in, in, in Edin, in Australia, and they actually, I mean, they did everything for us. They told us everything about what they were doing, and they even offered to share for free all the software that they had developed. So, um, no, there is a lot of that. Now, if you look at the intergovernmental, the, the high-level agencies, that's that may be a different thing. That's probably more like a shark swimming with shark sort of sea. And I would like to, to hear comments from from the other people there that are that have experience in, at the international arena. But ne, ne, you are right, among the national agencies, there is a lot of cooperation and interest that the others see. And maybe among the very large multilateral ones, there may be less um, Less collegial, that's a word. <laughs> okay, a comment from your colleague, Boss. Um, I think there is an interesting irony that we can comment on. In the world of research, in my experience, my years in academia and museums, in the world of research, the competition was fierce. And people, researchers, and the researchers told their students, watch your data, hoard your data, don't share with anyone, don't allow anybody to steal your research. But in the world of biodiversity data in terms of informatics, the environment has been the completely the reverse. It's now... Um, the environment is one of open access, open access, open access. GBIF stands for open access. And indeed it is the institutions or the singular curators at a singular institution that wants to hide their collections data from going online. They are the ones who are now vilified. They are the ones who are um, uh, being uh, consistently pressured to get, you know, to get with the game of, of open access. So there's been a complete reversal in that attitude from research to, say, collection-based uh, uh, biodiversity data. Second, um, I'm going to relate uh, just an experience at the University of Kansas in terms of sharing expertise. I remember when we, um, an individual arrived from Korea um, one day, his name was Ricardo, and he stayed with us for a year. I have no idea how he was funded. Either we paid for him, or you paid for him, or we both paid for him. We both paid for him. And he was, we can, we can uh, safely say, responsible for uh, the initial porting of niche modeling, very early form of niche modeling algorithms and software from 
uh, a mainframe application to a PC application. And that happened, and it happened almost free of charge as a collaboration between CREA and University of Kansas. Nobody ever thought or even said a word about being proprietary. As a matter of fact, it was, here, here's a guy who has incredible expertise, use him. That's okay, but this way he hears you. Jorge, Alex from Ghana is going to make a comment. He says he really doesn't want to talk to you, but, <laughs> but you might as well hear what he has to say. It's kind of for the broader group. Good, thanks. Um, it's, it's a general comment or question. What, it's an ideal biodiversity informatics institute in terms of infrastructure, in terms of expertise, what basic things are we thinking of to say this is a biodiversity informatics institute? Thank you. So when we say building biodiversity informatics institutions, what are we talking about? Say that again. What is an ideal biodiversity informatics institution? Yeah, but what about them? What is the ideal institution? What's the objective of all of this? So we have an answer from Kristalka. I've always said that the ideal museum, the one I would love to be a director of, is the museum of almost famous objects. The apple that almost, the museum of almost famous objects. The apple that almost fell on Newton. The bed that Washington almost slept in, and so forth. In other words, it'd be great. Be director of museum with no objects. The ideal biodiversity informatics institution is the one that has no data. <laughs> it's a joke. It's late in the day. Ironically, it came from the guy who's advertising for the rights <laughs> To be slightly less facetious, Maybe it's all context dependent. Uh, yeah. You know, what, what Kriya does, and what KU does, and what Conabio does, and what Sanbi does, each is responding to its particular context. And so what KU does is going to be in an academic setting. We might do some policy stuff, we might do some software development, but when you boil it all down, we're a bunch of academics and students. And CRIA has a very different set of priorities. And you just heard how Conabio is responding to, what did Jorge say, dozens of queries from the Mexican government every month. And if that's the case, imagine doing one of those niche modeling exercises to figure out the wild, wild relatives of cotton. I think Jorge said in a week. That's scary. Lucy, did you have a comment? So, yeah, which is... Response, Jorge? Can I make a Of course. I, I, miss, I miss most of what you said. It's not, not, I mean, the connection is not good. I hope you can hear me. We can My hear you ideal, perfectly. There is no such thing as a, the ideal biodiversity institution. There is the ideal because there are many, many facets, many aspects to the problem. It's like the no silver bullet theorem that you may explain to the class, Peterson, if you want to. Uh, the thing is that the way I see, uh, in, in, in terms of what you are discussing there, I think that the, the, the question is whether it is possible to create a very good bridging institution. The bridging institution is an institution that connects two different aspects 
of, of the activity, the scientific on the one hand and the policy on the other. Those are the bridging institutions. And uh, an institution can, be, can play several roles. I think they are bridging functions. For instance, it can be in a university or in a museum, no doubt. Uh, Conavio evolved as, a, as, as very much as a bridging institution most of the time. So its skill is to, to make 